How is that? A little better? Yeah? No? <laughs> no, it's, the sound is better. Can I put that on for us? Yes. Would that be better? Okay. So, I could st uh, stretch my voice and speak much louder. All righty. Well, um, we want to take this moment to um, pass on our condolences to uh, Kevin's family. We have been praying. We've been praying for Kevin, uh, lost his dad, and, uh, and the whole family members we are praying. So continue to pray and support him. And uh, So Kevin, you are in our prayers. We are, and let us know anything that we could be doing. We would love to be helping you in that. And uh, also thank you, uh, uh, Jeff and Laura, for putting this uh, wonderful ministry together, Abounding in Grace. Uh, food pantry, it is very much in need these days. People are struggling all over. Um, so this is one way that we can communicate uh, our love, God's love to us uh, in our community. This actually came out of some of the process that we have uh, discussed in, in the month of March when we got together and we said, let's put our mind together, our skills and our uh, expertise together and how we could be a blessing to the community. And here we go. And Jeff and Laura have got some uh, wonderful skills that they're putting this together. Uh, and so take a moment, go down and see uh, what uh, our food pantry could offer. Uh, we are working with three different churches, our church, uh, First Baptist Church, uh, and also the Boston Indian Church that they meet here. So even in you, someone you know might be in need of something of, for some food and all that. Let them know, Let's, we can talk about that and uh, help those. Um, so uh, with that, let's uh, look to the word today from the passage what Kathy has read for us uh, from Second uh, Corinthians. Uh, I want to read one more verse uh, from one more time, uh, verses uh, 10 and 11. When you forgive this man, I forgive him too. And when I forgive whatever needs to be forgiven, I do so with Christ's authority for your benefit. So that Satan will not outsmart us, for we are familiar with his evil schemes. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we look into your word, you will speak to us all that we need to know, all that we need to learn, and all that we need to apply. In Jesus' precious name I pray, amen. Amen. Well, the, the topic that I'm going to talk about today is very sticky subject uh, and hard subject as well. Uh, it's very much needed, but not many people talk about this. So the, the weather that we are experiencing can make it even more stickier and hotter. Uh, so bear with this. If you need to move somewhere, you know, get more fresh air and, uh, or uh, go down, come up, whatever that takes you. So let's pay attention to this. Forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. Where does this phrase come from? Where is forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us? The Lord's Prayer. Well, if you if you were born a Catholic, you would have told me right away where it came from. You know, it is from. The prayer the Lord taught his disciples. You know, Jesus prayed many prayers. This is one prayer was not for him. He didn't pray for him. He prayed for us. Or he taught us because we are in need of this much more than he was in need of it. Amen? So let's move on. So this is not the Lord's prayer, but the prayer that the Lord taught us how to pray. We all need forgiveness, don't we? We all do. But to be forgiven, we must forgive those who have offended us. Has anyone offended you? Mm. 
Have you offended anybody? Oh, you don't want to go there. But in order to be forgiven, we need to forgive those who have offended us. You know, we realize, I believe, we know all that it is easier said than done. Let's take it to forgive others. It's easier said than done. For instance, let's say if someone um, uh, offended you by telling a lie, well, it's easy, probably easier to forgive. Okay, I forgive you, you know, for telling a lie. But how about if someone killed your husband and two of your boys? Can you forgive that person, that cruel man who did that heartless work act? Well, that was exa exactly uh, Gladys Staines, an Australian missionary, did. On January 22nd, 1999, uh, on the way back from visiting a tribal site, Graham Staines, along with his two boys, Timothy and Philip, uh, they were uh, back in the, from the forest back home. Uh, they s stopped in the night because it's too hot, and then they slept in the vehicle, in the car they were traveling in. And there were a group of 50 uh, Hindu radicals came in, you know, they mobbed that, they converged upon the camp, and they set the thing, uh, the van on fire. Graham and his uh, sons tried to escape that fire, but the mob kept them in, in the van itself. Can you imagine that? They didn't let them go. So the later on, the next day, Gladys and Esther, their daughter, heard about this whole thing and what a heartbreaking situation that is. So the murderers were widely condemned by everybody. But Gladys Staines chose to forgive her husband and son's killers. Stating in an affidavit, this is what she said, it is far from my mind to punish the persons who were responsible for the death of my husband, Graham, and two, my two children. But it is my desire and hope that they would repent and be reformed or be changed. Forgiveness and the consequences of our wrongdoing should not be mixed up. These are two different things. Because of forgiveness, I hold, I hold, Graham Stein's wife said, I hold no bitterness towards the person who killed my family. Forgiveness brought healing and brought healing which is needed everywhere from, hate, from hatred and violence. What Jeff was talking, everywhere there's hatred and violence. But forgiveness can bring healing to us when from those who have offended us. Now what a powerful example of uh, 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 Gladys Staines. There's been a, a movie made out of this. Uh, it's called The Least of These, um, the, the, the story of uh, Gladys, uh, Graham Staines and their wonderful work in India, uh, leprosy, they pay, they're taking care of the lepers. So I wanted to watch this. As you go home, probably it's on Amazon, it's a worth, mo worthwhile movie to watch so that we can understand the impact of what forgiveness can do to people who actually practice that. So we've been following Corinthian church for quite some time. It's been a model for us in terms of what not to do and also what to do. How some things we should avoid and how some things we should do. So this is one thing perhaps today we can learn how and what we should be doing through this piece, uh, uh, a portion of letter that was read to us. Uh, here Paul explaining some uh, painful situation. There was someone who offended him. Uh, and then uh, he encouraged the Corinthian believers to forgive that individual, also to restore him back to the fellowship. The two things, forgive and restore him into the fellowship. And also, we talk about what happens when we don't forgive. How is forgiveness tied to our mental health? Is there any connection between forgiveness and our mental health? So let's explore this as we go into. Uh, let me quickly go through these first few verses. Verses 1 and 2 explain why Paul only made one trip to Corinth instead of two. Remember last 
Sunday we talked about, he said he would make two, but he only made one. So he explains in this passage why. Uh, because uh, he had a painful confrontation uh, at Corinth uh, during his first, first tri trip. And he, he dealt with them rather harshly. So he didn't want to cause more pain to them by making another trip. So he said, okay, there's one is enough. That's why he didn't make the second trip uh, to the sec in, the second, uh, in this passage. Uh, he wanted to spare them from more pain and uh, agony. Verses 3 and 4 explain that uh, Paul's reason for writing why he wrote this letter. He, telling them he wrote this severe letter, the first letter was very painful to write. Out of much pain and much agony, he wrote that. But always remember, he was always loving. Sometimes we say hard things at people, we think they the, uh, are uh, 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 harsh words, but the bottom line has to be love. It has to be motivated out of love. Paul, motiva Paul's motivation was, has always been out of love. So in verses 5 and 11, that's where we'll be spending and go a little further beyond those verses as well. We see there was a particular man mentioned several times. A man, a man, a man, we see that. Who was that man? I wish I could tell you who it was. We don't have a uh, 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 recorded evidence of who that person was. So what was Paul trying to mention here? Probably he was mentioning there were different two views. Number one view was that um, uh, this particular person, whoever that was, has committed a severe offense in the Corinthian church. And the church disciplined that person. And then now Paul was saying it's about time you restore him back to. Enough. You put him out of fellowship, whatever you did. You disciplined him. And he repented. Now it is time that you bring him back to, into the fellowship with the others. Another view could be that um, Paul might have been referring to the person in 1 Corinthians 5th chapter. Do you remember that one person was living with his step uh, a mother? That was a situation, sexual immorality that he was conducting. So probably that was something that he was referring to. Um, but whoever that man was, Paul talking about, there is an underlying principle we want us to, I want us to look at that. That this particular passage is one of the best examples of uh, the motivation of the church are the, the, the godly motivation of the church and also about the, the impact of forgiveness. How church need to discipline as well as remove, bring them back into restoration so that because of the forgiveness uh, uh, that person can be brought back. So I'm going to explore with you together, if you will, uh, stay with me, several principles regarding forgiveness uh, and its impact on the believers and also the effects of unforgiveness. So let's look at first of all what is forgiveness concerning salvation. Nothing weighs us down more than the guilt of doing something wrong. It weighs us down. And if you care to ag admit the guilt of sin weighs us even much more heavy right? Heavier than little offenses here and there. It, it weighs us down. But the good news is that we don't have to carry that heavy burden of the guilt of sin because God has promised to forgive all our sins. God, out of his great love for us, he will forgive all of our sins. And if I tell you, ask a question, is there anyone here who has never sinned? Please lift your hand up. Never sinned? I'm so glad we all are honest people sitting here. We all have. One way or the other, we all sin. All have fallen short of the glory of God, the scripture tells us. But the good news today, whatever sin that you may have committed, God is able to forgive that. Do you say amen for that? Amen. So let it come. Whatever that is guilting you, keep, keeping you out of guilt, you can bring that guilt to Jesus and let him deal with that. 
He will deliver you and me from the penalty of sin and from the power of sin. What is the power of sin? The scripture tells us is that the wages of sin is death. Not the physical death, but the eternal death. And but thank God, in Jesus Christ, we can be forgiven. So forgiveness in the Bible has to do with release of something or dismissal of something. That is forgiveness, releasing of. What is releasing? Releasing from the guilt of sin and dismissing the, the whole sin that we have ever committed in the sight of God. So how it works? When we come to Christ in faith, he releases us from the, uh, the and cancels all our sins. In other words, whatever the charges leveled against you through your conscience or by Satan, Satan is the great accuser. Whatever the, those charges leveled against you, when you come to Christ, ask him to forgive you, all those charges were dropped. You know, in the, uh, in the court of law, what happens when all the charges are dropped? You are, there is one word called acquitted. Means you are acquitted or you're free. That means you've never done anything wrong, so you can walk out freely. That's what happens when we come to Christ. We can walk out freely because God forgives all. There's no one sin that he cannot forgive, all sins. There's only one thing I think the Bible talks about is the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Well, we're not going there. But many of those sins could be, all these things could be forgiven. So forgiveness is an uh, integral part for salvation. And forgive, us forgiving others is very important in regards to receiving, uh, us receiving the forgiveness. So in order to be saved, you need to be forgiven. In order to be forgiven, you need to forgive others. So all interconnected. Let's move on to see what that means. So when Jesus forgives us, what does he do? He removes our sins, trespasses, wrongs, and offenses. They're, they're erased and wiped off the, rec of the record. You know, when Jesus said on the cross, it is finished, that's what he meant. All our sins could be completely forgiven and wiped, wiped, uh, uh, wiped out of our, uh, our lives. Um, so what does he do with them? How far will he remove our sins? Look at it, Psalm 103. Verse 12, it says, um, He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. Uh, I, I don't want, to, I want you to go and measure how far that is, but pretty far. In other words, he does not remember those things. In other places, I don't remember all your sins. When God forgives, he forgives all our sins. Uh, it's beautifully put together in uh, first Colossians, first chapter, verses 1 to 4, first chapter, verse 14. Uh, this cancellation part applies here in Amplified Version. Let me read that. In whom we have redemption, because of his sacrifice, resulting in the forgiveness of our sins and the cancellation of sin's penalty. Thank God, God forgives our sins. So I want to appeal to you here today, all those who are listening to me to, uh, via live stream, uh, if you can confess your sin to Jesus, whatever that may be, you, have fi you will find freedom. You will be forgiven. Do you say amen for that? You will be forgiven of all your sins? Amen. Hallelujah. So once you're forgiven, what, did not, what now? What is it? We are forgiven now. Now what are we to do? Well, we need to forgive. Yeah, what are we to do? You will, okay, you will be forgiven more. Right? You go sin some more, yes. That's what some people... Some people would, do, would love to do that, then come back to God, and then, and then they will, for, you receive more forgiveness. So it, once you're forgiven, it's not that you will never sin ever again. We will, but we will come back again. 
and then we will be forgiven. So it's almost like every time you come back, your, your plate is cleaned up, the messy plate. You know how, how many times you put dishes in your dishwasher once a year? Please don't do that, right? You clog up the system. And almost every time it is dirty, you clean it. So similarly, when we are, every time when we feel dirty because we've done something wrong, we come to Jesus and apply his precious blood that we could be cleansed all over again. And then we can free to love him and to free to serve him as we go on, but not to free to sin again. But we can, uh, we may. Uh, let's look at what, what would be our responsibility here. I want to look at what is forgiveness of others. What is forgiveness of others? Forgiveness of others for Christians is one of the hallmarks because forgiveness is not an option, but it is a command. Christ has commanded us to forgive. Hmm. He has commanded us to love, but also he has forgiven us, asked us to forgive others. How do we know? Ephesians 4, chapter, verse 30 uh, to 32. Let's look at that. Do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, and forgiving one another. It is a command, though everything, be kind, is not a suggestion. Command to be kind. It is command to be tender-hearted. It is a command to be forgiving one another. How? Why? As God has forgiven me. Through Christ Jesus, he has forgiven me. So therefore, I am commanded. You are commanded to do the same. Now, how many of you want to say amen for that? Well, not so many amens for that now, right? We are getting that. We are just, let's move on to get this. God wants us to be forgiving others, commanding others to, for us to do that. How do we do that? You know, it's, uh, uh, we, when we don't forgive, what happens? He says, we are grieving the Holy Spirit, and all this is playing out here. Let's look at Colossians 3, verse 13. It says, make allowances for each other's faults, and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you. So you must forgive others. It's not that you we may, maybe not, but you must forgive others. So what is here? We got to be gracious and making room for other people to make mistakes because we made mistakes. God has been gracious towards us. Sometimes we say, oh, well, we were so perfection. We, we expect perfection from others. Well, God doesn't expect perfection from you because you can't, if he, he does, but you can never measure up to his perfection. Amen? But yet he's gracious towards us. So therefore, can we be the same with one another and not make allowance for there may be some mistakes that they, they make, but always be kind-hearted towards them. So are you so, so far with me so far? Right? You are, you know, you... Uh, if you're being hot, then you can stand up and sit back again. But let's, let's move on. But the key in this, both of these passages are we are to forgive others as God has forgiven us. Why do we forgive? Because God has forgiven us. Now here it is. I want to talk about what happens when we don't forgive and then com conclude with the benefits of forgiveness. Beyond our salvation, what else, what are the other benefits of forgiveness? So let me take us there. The passage we read alludes to something, what I call here, a bait of Satan. Unforgiveness is a bait of Satan. Let me read that passage for us, how I can, how we can see. That as 2 Corinthians 2, 10 to 11. When you forgive this man, I forgive him too. And when I forgive whatever needs to be forgiven, I do so with Christ's authority for your benefit. So that Satan will not outsmart us. 
for we are familiar with his evil schemes. How many of you think that Satan has evil schemes? Oh boy, we all are good with that. You know, he's got one, one evil scheme or plenty? Oh, plenty of them. Evil, Paul said evil schemes, plurality there. He's a trickist. He's got so many tricks up on his sleeves to trick us down, to trap us, to throw baits at us so that we can catch on to his bait and we fall for his temptation. And then we sin. So, so Paul is he's warning people, be aware of these schemes. We, are, we don't want to be outsmarted by Satan. Do you want to be outsmarted by Satan? No, none of us. Well, one way we can be aware of his schemes is through love and forgiveness. Otherwise, because he will use unforgiveness as a bait. In a book uh, I was reading uh, by John Bevere, um, you know, in a book called The Bait of Satan, uh, he talks about how uh, uh, one of the many schemes of Satan is, uh, it is uh, um, uh, forgive, unforgiveness is his bait. He will use that for you. And he will tell you how, he will come and whisper into your mind, he says, you don't have to forgive that person. Why? He or she do not deserve your forgiveness. Did you deserve God's forgiveness when you sinned? No. Have you been forgiven? If you have said out, shout it loud, I have been. Yes. I didn't deserve it. Then Satan comes and says these lies to us. So and so do not deserve. Sometimes I hear these, uh, some court cases and you know, on the news, uh, somebody, when I offer an apology, somebody says, well, apology uh, uh, acknowledged, but apology is not accepted. Okay, what is that? I don't know. Acknowledged, okay, but uh, that means well, I'm not fully taking that. You know, there's complications involved in that. I'm not going to go there, but I'm trying to bring some biblical principles for us here, uh, for us to understand uh, why Paul can, uh, the Satan could use this as a trap. He whispers to us. And the, more, the, lo the longer you remain unforgiving, the longer we are locking ourselves up in this prison called unforgiveness. We are trapped into it, and we cannot free ourselves from it. So that's why Paul was urging the Roman believers, saying that never pay back evil with more evil. That's what the world does, wants to pay more evil, paying back to that person who hurt you, or more, more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do you want to be known as an honorable person, a woman and a man of honor? The, one of the, the most honorable thing that you can do is to love people. Amen? To love the unlovable. That's, that is the test for us. Oh, if everybody's good to you, you love them. There's all the good people, precious people, love people and all that. But if some people are bad to you, boom. Can we still love them? But that's what we are called to do. We need to love people. Uh, uh, that's the most honorable thing we can do. Uh, Romans 12, 17, right? We looked at that. Dear friends, through unforgiveness, we open a door. We open, I open, you open a door for all these vices and more. Anger, hatred, vengeance, and bitterness in our hearts. So Paul was showing one of the ways that we can free ourselves from the trap of unforgiveness, not to fall for this bait of Satan by loving the person who offended us. First Corinthians 13th chapter verse five, what does it say? That love is not easily provoked or offended. Sometimes we can get easily offended by 
small things. Uh, I'm not saying, I'm not minimizing the, the offense that you perhaps have been experiencing from some people. That's, uh, I'm not minimizing that. But there are times we can get easily offended for little things. You know, that we don't want to be easily offended by those little things. Uh, 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 and uh, I tell you, uh, the, it says the love is not easily provoked or offended. So what does it mean here? It is unloving to be easily offended. And it is unchristlike to not to forgive others or to withhold forgiveness from others. That's what scripture plainly talked to us here. Do we live in a society that where people constantly offend people? How many of you say yes to that? Yeah. Right? We all offend people, right? And maybe if I speak uh, an hour here, I'll be offending everybody. No one will come back to listen to me again. We can always offend people, right? There are offenses. We can always do this. We can offend people. Uh, but uh, so what do we do? If everybody reacts and uh, avenges the offender, we have no one left. Why? We kill each other. <laughs> because sometimes that could be so, we want to kill or hurt each other. But then what is the solution here for us? How can we live peaceable, peace, with, with peace uh, amicably in our society? Well, Paul has four suggestions for us uh, uh, in uh, uh, Hebrews. If you uh, let me lay them out for us, four things we can do here. One is we have to work at living in peace with everyone. Hard work. We have to work at it, living in peace with everyone. Or uh, we have to work at living a holy life. Again, there is God forgive, God cleanses us, but also we need to work at ourselves doing the right things not going out sinning more, but doing the right things, trying to work at by living a holy life. And then it says, for those who are not holy will not see the Lord. The third one here, look after each other, so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. I had hope, church, we are good at looking, at, looking after each other's uh, concerns and the welfare. We, we, we've been good at that. Let's excel in doing that. Here also, excel in it. Uh, helping each other so that people will not lose uh, 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 receiving the grace of God. And it says, watch out. This is individual's responsibility. Watch out. No poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. When you do not forgive people, when you hold on to, when you harbor uh, uh, vengeance and hatred and all that, what's happening is you are, there's a root of bitterness growing up with inside of you to first and foremost to defile me, defile you, through that defile many. So watch out. So how do we deal with that? Releasing forgiveness from your heart. Not minimizing the consequences, the, the punishment, the legalities, the, the justice aspect of uh, punishment. That is a different thing. But in your heart, you are releasing that person from, say, I forgive that person so that you are freeing yourself to go on to live the way God would have you live. That thought, you, you freed up that. You're not constantly thinking about that individual or, or individuals. You say, I forgive and I move on with my life with the help of Jesus. Trying to live in peace with one another as much as possible. So these are a few things I've, I want us to pay attention to. So let's look at one more uh, aspect here. Uh, who, does, who deserves forgiveness? And what are the benefits? I already, already labored on that. You know, when it comes to my forgiveness, my pardon, I cry and I beg. <laughs> Please, Lord, have mercy on me. I cry out and beg for my pardon of sins. But when forgiving others, we might hold back and say, I forgive you. That's the hardest thing. Or we, say, we may say, so and so don't deserve. Really? Well, who deserves forgiveness? No one, as I said. God forgives us as we cry out to him. So now let me look at few aspects, the benefits of it as we close. 
what are some of the benefits of forgiveness? When we forgive others of their offenses, what happens to us? God, he says, for, forgive our trespasses as, as we, there's a process, right? As we forgive those who have trespassed against us. So as you do that, so if you, do you want to do favor to yourself? You want God to forgive your offenses, wrongdoings? Well, here is the how you do. Start forgiving others. Otherwise, you are blocking your God's forgiveness coming towards you by not releasing that. So that's what it means. So God forgives our offenses, and then what happens? He heals our body. He heals our mind. He heals our soul. Psalm 103 verse 3 says, He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. God can heal us, our body, mind, and soul, when we offer forgiveness to others. James 5th chapter, verse 16 says, Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. So think about this. Is there sometimes when we have this sickness in our body because of we are living in fallen world we get sick and we 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 have these uh, diseases that attack us and then that impact our bodies and all that that is one uh, way we get sick but there are other ways sometimes we we get sick because of some uh, uh, unwilling to release forgiveness there are certain things that holds us back uh, 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 when we harbor the bitterness, it's a bitter root, it goes in us. So even when you go for counseling these days, they deal with these aspects of forgiveness. Psych psychology, isn't it? If you've gone to therapist, they'll uh, walk you through. Are there some people that have hurt you that you haven't ha uh, forgiven? Uh, the, according to Harvard Medical School, um, it says that not forgiving someone can impact both physical and mental health. It can feel like the person has gone through a significant traumatic event. Forgiveness, on the other hand, other hand can lead to lowered blood pressure and a healthier heart. It decreases anxiety and depression and improves your relationships. And so, even the secular people are recognizing that forgiveness and healing have an emotional and physical bond. Having one without the other is impossible. I'll firsthand I can share this with you. Back in India, I was ministering with a lot of with young people, uh, 18 years and 25, that range, uh, through a particular teaching called Divine Plumb Line. So one of the things when we come to pray for the inner healing of the individuals is that we minister the heart of God's Father heart. Say, so God is like your father, and God loves you. And, uh, and some, of, many of, some of these young people have had issues with their, with their fathers abusing them or being harsh to them. And then, then they, they built up hatred uh, or, or anger, resentment towards their parents. And then they were not letting that go. They would hold on to that. When we say, please forgive your father, they would say, no, we're not going to, I'm not going to forgive. And, and there's, there's a tension going on between that person and the prayer that we are offering. So sometimes we used to be patiently asking them to release that, release that. There's one counselor told me, you know, he was uh, begging uh, the person who was, he's praying for on his knees, would you please forgive me, think that I am your father, I am your father, you know, I, and your father has done this and all that, please forgive me, I'm asking you forgiveness. That person said, no, I'm not going to forgive, I'm not going to forgive. He's begging, please forgive me, forgive me on his knees. Towards the end, she said, I forgive you. But basic, because she said, uh, I, I, you've been on your knees for too long. I, I couldn't see you anymore on your knees. But even then, as she released forgiveness, God began to heal. So there are certain healing comes to us when we heart 
It's a hard work, but when we do that, God begins to heal us. When we forgive others, God will forgive us. Then you may ask me, does, do people have to ask me for forgiveness before I forgive them? Do you think the forgiveness is sought? People have to ask you, please forgive me, then only you will forgive? What do you think? No, no right? Well, because there are, there are aspects, God forgives when you go, but Jesus offered forgiveness to the world. Remember when, the, when he was on the cross, he was hanging on the cross, what happened? He prayed a prayer of forgiveness. He said, Father, please forgive them. They don't know what they were doing. So you don't have to wait for someone so on to come. You could go before the Lord and say, I want to forgive that person. Lord, now you begin to work with me. And then you begin to receive that healing in your life. Now the last, que last question is, how many times do I forgive? One time? Two? Three? How about seven times? Well, Peter thought he was very smart, right? When he said, can I forgive seven times, Lord? And he didn't know what the Lord was going to say. Oh, well done, Peter. You did a good job. Here is a brownie point. No, he looked back to him and he said, well, not seven times. How many times? Seventy times seven. How much is that? Four hundred and ninety times, you know. Is there someone we can probably come to? Maybe not. I, but at this, you know, it says, he's, a, he's illustrating a point here more. Each time that person comes to you, asks you for forgiveness, you release. How many times in my last 20, uh, uh, you know, since the age 18, I kept asking God to forgive me. And even yesterday, I asked the Lord to forgive me. Or there are times I keep coming back to him every time in my own life. You know, we come to the Lord, and the Lord is faithful to forgive us. First John verse uh, 9, what, is it, what does it say? But if we confess our sins to Him, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and do cleanse us from all wickedness. Would you stand with me together as we close our time? one moment of silence as the worship is, team is coming up. Think about your own life. Is there a particular sin that is troubling you or sins troubling you? Today, you can ask the Lord to forgive you. In your own heart. That's for you. And number two, is there someone perhaps you need to be forgiving from your own heart, releasing that forgiveness to that individual so that I set myself, you could set yourself free from the prison of unforgiveness by being merciful to others as God has been merciful to me many many times and I will I will ask him to continue to remain merciful and forgiving towards me his mercies are new every morning may the Lord help us give us grace walk with us heal us set us on the right path so that we receive his love and we receive his forgiveness but we also be willing to love others and extend forgiveness to others. Worship team, lead us in a closing song.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, we thank you. We are overwhelmed by your love towards us. Sinner like me, sinners like us, you are willing and able to forgive and cleanse us. Lord God, throughout our lives, may we keep those short accounts with you and with people, Lord. So at the end of our lives, we can stand in, in front of you boldly and say, thank you, Jesus. Praise you for you have forgiven us to be with you forever. So Lord, we thank you today. We can uh, be like you, Lord, in this world as we go out and reflect your love. We thank you and we praise you, Jesus. In your name we pray, amen. The love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with us forever and ever, amen. Amen. God bless you. Uh, you may want to go downstairs for a moment, in a, mo a moment before you go off to uh, and just take a look at what is available. And by the way, downstairs is much cooler. So we'll see you, God willing, next Sunday.